women generally don't like to go back yeah generally i'm not saying all but women generally don't like to go back and he was regretting at one point that he should have gone back uh now he has lost that chance completely now the only thing which is uh it was providing to my mind it was better managed traffic to my mind and the cleanliness which we find a bit less in india and i think they all agreed that they made a mistake by not going on time yes i mean it's not one it's almost all of all of them Hello everyone welcome back to another episode of Desi Return today i'm really excited to have praveen on our show praveen went to uk in 2006 spent a year in us before uh, making london as their home and uh, spending close to 18 years before deciding to move back to india uh, i'm really looking forward to the discussion uh, because uh, praveen uh, has been on an entrepreneur role while living outside and uh, you know the reasons why he decided to move back to india and uh, you know how the planning the transition and everything is going on and also someone from uk you know living for so long uh, i think you know it definitely give a different perspective of the life in uk in europe and so on uh, with that welcome pravin to the show thank you thank you avinash thank you very much that's great so let's start a bit about your background uh, praveen like uh, you know the educational background and uh, what made you to move to uk i think that would be very helpful okay sure so i mean like a very you know any standard it professional um, i started my career um, you know at sapient sapient corporation in gurgaon yeah and um, so yeah because at that point in time in 2004 i mean so there were a lot of on site opportunities immediately coming you know when when i joined and within two years i finally you know uh, came to uk uh, to work for a hedge fund um, and that was very exciting at that point in time when i came here i loved it the kind of financial industry so i was like, i'm more like you know in a financially financial industry person So when I came here, it was fabulous. I mean, London was the place to go to. I mean, I can tell you, uh, in two thousand and six, when I came here, yeah, it was uh, the the buzz, the everything was superb. I worked here for a year, then I, uh, then I think my my company Sapien they sent me to US to work for another client UBS, and because I had the good experience of working with traders and you know portfolio managers in that sort of industry so ubs was another kind of a, they wanted to crack and then i i went to new york and stanford area which was again another great great experience but i loved uk at that time yeah so i i i asked my company to send me back to uk so yeah. i mean they agreed because luckily my performance that year was good <laughs> and i have been able to kind of you know increase their account you know that what yeah. typically happens in it so they were very happy they sent me over back to the uk but the but the uk was going uh, not the, not only the uk the entire world was going through the downturn in 2008 right credit yes. crisis happened but anyway so that was the that was my initial move and um, then i mean there was no project to work on i mean for for many months i was on bench in uk with a lot of job losses but my company you know was happy to keep me on the payroll then i worked in germany for a year i mean they sent me over to germany then i worked in germany in dusseldorf for a year i saw that life by that time i was also married and then my wife also accompanied me to dusseldorf germany yeah but throughout that period i mean i can tell you i have been telling my wife you know i want to go back one day because it feels very dry i mean in in all these places of course it's great but it is dry something is missing there is a uh, i'm not sure how many viewers will understand it there is a very 
specific word. Somebody told me about that. That word is called Jivantata. So Jivantata is a is a uh, uh, is a kind of a word which has a very specific meaning in Hindi, Sanskrit, whatever. That means some kind of a, you know, uh, Jivan means life and yeah. the life, the, the, the vibrancy of life. That is what is kind of missing from the Indian standard. So I was missing all of that. However, the biggest challenge we all Indians face is that all the Indians, those who are in India, like, you know, your relatives, your parents, uh, and your, you know, all the friends and near and dear, they brag about you. <laughs> and when you go back, they tell you, they make you feel that, you know, oh, you are doing great. You, you have gone abroad. You must be having amazing life. Life is so great over there. Yeah, I used to accept that. But in my mind, I used to feel, man, you guys have better life than me because you don't have to do the, you know, you don't have to wash your dishes. You don't have to do all the things. Which, fine, I am happy to do that. But you know, it is it is a too much of a work when you come back from office and everything, and yeah. then you have to sort out your laundry. You have to sort out your everything. In fact, everything. Yeah. But anyways, it was fine. I mean, my yeah. wife was very you know she was very uh, she was happy to do all of that. She was also happy, but I was internally feeling like you know, but that kept on going in my mind. You know, yeah. Always. Yeah, so I think uh, that was the start of the kind of uh, 2000 and uh, till 2010, 11 around. Got it. And uh, yeah, then afterwards, uh, came back to the UK again, changed jobs, switched, you know, you know, you know, as usual, now you know the playground, how to play because at Initially, your company sent you over to the to, uh, to to London, and then you kind of understanding the world. So now you understand the world. Now you are ready to kind of uh, you ready to take off, right? So then, when I was ready to take off, change, switch jobs, I realized my value in the yeah. Western world, my skills value, and all that. And then, of course, I got better, uh, paid jobs, and then um, so all of that continued through the you know, the you know, standard, what you call the um, uh, corporate ladders and everything, enjoying it. In 2019, I was, uh, I was kind of, you know, before that, I mean, not even 2015 around, I started feeling like, you know, I need to, I need to kind of, you know, become an entrepreneur. I'm somehow kind of, a, I was having an urge to uh, be an entrepreneur. Then I started my business slowly. It's of course online and everything, so there's nothing. I mean, I have to. Uh, I don't have any physical presence. It's all online. So, so my business took off by 2019. I then I left this corporate uh, okay. world altogether, completely. And uh, and uh, because of business, of course, you know, you you, you tends to make slightly more, you slightly kind of uh, than your u- usual jobs. Then um, I started having a good life again. You know, was no problem at all. I thought I'm going to live here forever again. In 2019 itself, I was started doing all the best thing which I can I can do, like you know, sending my kids to kind of private schools and and uh, enroll them into various activities. Uh, you know, increased my ambitions. You know, in fact, basically, my if my children wants to kind of do swimming, they want to play tennis or they want to do you know whatever the sports they want to do I'm, yeah. I'm, I want them to kind of pursue all of that but that's where the reality kicked in because taking them to all the places like if my son wants to do let's say boxing mm-hmm. it's not like you know you just enroll them to the boxing and they, some, some the things will happen it's not like that here you have to basically go there stay there for a few hours and then drive them back to home. And at home, you have to again do all the, you know, you know, cooking and you know, all the things, whatever you have to do, you have to sort out everything. And you have to make sure the other son, if he's younger, then somebody has to be with him as well. If, if one parent has to be. So it it became kind of a juggling. You know, there's nothing, no support of the parental support or a professional support or anything like that. Yeah. The second thing which kicked in as well at this stage of life was that, which is with everybody, in fact, 
you started realizing your parents are now too old to manage by themselves you know you can you were you were choosing to ignore all of that but uh, in reality you know if you pay attention they need you now i started i started realizing they need you now desperately they won't say anything because they they care for us for yes. your kids but they won't kind of you know put a pressure on you i know that but they will just you know that they need you they are like 65 70 whatever i know they need uh so and I, i whenever i go and meet my mom and i think i just sit with her that's it and she makes all the food for me she's happy with that yeah so they i mean in fact that's what they like they don't want anything from you they just want your attention and time and you know you be anyway so i started realizing all of that then kids problem then um i was not using any what do you call uh, government services in a way uh, i mean be beat medical or schooling and all that i was trying to use all my private uh, so then i was not using anything in this country anyway now the only thing which is uh, it was providing to my mind it was better managed traffic to my mind and the cleanliness which we find a bit less in india if you can if you're not annoyed by that if you're fine with that right yeah which i am of course i'm fine with it then i think th- you have everything to gain over there the in from in practicality so like my now my family and we are all over there so we have all the helps available we have even hired a driver which we cannot have here at home and and uh, i i can meet my mom quite regularly she can come and stay with us quite regularly and i don't know whether people feel it or not even when you land in india i feel like you know now i'm in my world you know you suddenly feel free some kind of a things kind of goes out of your body releases it makes you kind of free that's what my experience was yeah so uh so all of that basically i mean i i discussed that with my wife and generally i can tell you which is a which is not a secret any any more women generally don't like to go back yeah generally i'm not saying all but women generally don't like to go back and i and i realize that as well i realize that you know because relatives might come any time and they have to be in, in you know their freedom goes away they feel right yeah then i i came up with that solution that we should go to a different city yeah let's say i'm from let's say national capital region so we'll not go there we'll go some other city so that's yeah. why we finalized we we you know we agreed on bangalore yeah so that's my advice to the people that you know don't go back to the same city go to some other city yeah because your that problem which your wife has you know uh, regarding the relatives might be bumping over any time and the freedom might be lost or they have to think about what are they wearing and all that so 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 choose a different city yeah so there's less interference <laughs> Yeah. So yeah, I mean th- that was kind of a, so I did all that reiki all that yeah. Carry on. No, makes sense. So sounds like um you know very successful career in terms of uh, you know the progression right from 2000 till till 2015 and eventually started your own entrepreneurial journey which kind of took off in 2019 and you left the corporate world and then you started having these thoughts about hey you know these are all going in my mind but why 2024 like is there certain milestones that you are planning to achieve or is that uh, the timing of the move uh, how did you decide on that and uh, and then also like some of the planning that went into the move also like i think if you can shed some light i think that would be very helpful oh yeah i think that's a good point that's a very good question so <clears throat> uh so slowly you know you have all these things you know, stacking up in your mind yeah. at the back of your mind although it was uh, uh, not to a level where it kind of you know you know kind of you know what do you call uh, uh, like a threshold to make a, a threshold threshold yeah threshold to a where we so so my son he is uh, 13 i mean he became 13 recently the elder son the younger one is 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 uh, nine 
So there were quite a few thresholds which started hitting, you know, mm. one after the other. One was that uh, we became too busy in our, you know, younger sons, tennis and a lot of sports activities here and there. And we were completely burnt out to a level where it became almost like, a, you know, unmanageable. That's one. Then I started also, you know, listening to some of the good, uh, what do you call, podcasters, some, you know, what do you call, so-called scientific. So, thing which is developing at the moment is, which is very important for the kids. And I'm, we, me and my wife, we kind of think a lot about, you know, how are we raising our kids? Because that's our responsibility at this, at this stage of life. Yeah. So, here, the, the, because the weather generally is not nice for uh, during the winters it's it's extremely windy cold you know so you don't generally go out yeah and and here you don't have the gated communities like which you get in india quite easily so the problem what happens is like people generally don't send their kids out to play with any kids right so they because the everything is open they worry about the safety and all that so I saw my kids, whenever they get time at home, they were kind of watching iPad or watching TV or trying to be on some devices and all that. If you want to make them study or play, then you have to make sure that you have to spend the equal yeah. amount of time with them. Yeah. It's not like you just send them with some other kids and they will play. You have to take them to a, some football class or something like that or a cricket and then you stay there for hours and hours for the whole day. And you, you are not productive at that time. So I want them to play with the kids and develop a, what do you call interpersonal skills when you interact with a lot of kids, you know, around and, you know, of course, in a uh, in any sort of, a, uh, you know, human environment, you need to interact with a lot of kids and then you suddenly, sorry, you start kind of develop, you know, interpersonal skills. And that I see is lacks a lot all around. Got it. See, because, because I can see that a lot of kids, because they don't play out enough, uh, outside the professional way of playing, they they may be going in one or two, but, but in generally they are not interacting and their interpersonal skills are lacking. Yes, so that's one part which I realized. However, uh, so um, I was quite conscious of that. We were making a lot of effort, but you know this effort uh, uh, was too much on our part. I mean, it was going to another level. But the threshold. Uh, because it, it, it hit the threshold in and now because I realized my son, elder son, is now 13. Because I know in the UK, after 16 or 17, after a few years, children's become almost like independent, right? They, 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 they go independent and they are kind of start kind of getting to a stage of becoming independent. So you don't have any control over. I mean, I cannot just say that, you know, let's go to India and let's stay there for a, for a few years. At that time, if they decide not to go, I won't have any, what do you call, yeah. much. Um, uh, I mean, I, I, can't, I won't be able to do anything about it. So I thought, now if I don't if I don't go and I don't give them the exposure for a few years, then this opportunity will be, will be lost forever. Yeah. It, it cannot come again. Yeah. So that was my kind of uh, view on it. Sounds like I think it's mainly the kids age which is the right i think the threshold where it has to be done now or never never, uh, never. it was never because, because i talked to some of the guys i think i think i i spoke to one of the guy yeah uh he came much earlier uh, than us in the uk and his kids are already passed out they went to the university and i had a lot of chat you know i, I talked to him about the, on this subject and he was regretting at one point that he should have gone back. Uh, now he has lost that chance completely because his kids are developed in such a way that they don't want to go back because their entire circle is here. Mm, yeah. Now imagine a child who, you know, who is comfortable here yes. and there. At least they have both the worlds open. So at least give them that flexibility. And we need to have that flexibility as well. We also need to make a base in India now. It's completely fresh. Yes. Yeah, definitely. 
So yeah, thanks for uh, some insights in terms of how the uh, planning, in terms of the timing of the move. Uh, if you're open, I think you kind of mentioned, right? I think your uh, business is more online. It's not of a physical presence. So uh, am I, like maybe you can say, uh, give some insights, like is the plan with the transition that you will be continuing the same thing because it's online and managing it from India? Or like, what's your plan from a career side or anything on a professional side that you can provide any insights on that? So that was the easiest part I can tell you. That was the uh -huh. easiest part because uh, my entire team sits in India. Oh, so okay. my company, the entire team sits in India. So in fact, that's even better because the you know the times overlap pretty kind of easily and all that, and I will be able to meet them quite uh, frequently and all that. So, um, so yeah, I think uh, so. In terms of, I'll continue to do the same business. Of course, yes, correct. Yeah. So I think there's no there's no change in that. Got it. Uh, with, with some change, I mean, I would say that because I'm doing one startup, but my network is in the UK, not in India yet. I mean, I have to form a network in India, but it's not. So using my existing uh, uh, UK network, I'm trying to do one startup and I'm trying to use leverage my India presence as well if I can do something about it. But that's in a, that's another okay. kind of, yeah. but that is only, that was only, that's only possible when I got time. Yes. You understand what I mean? So yeah. now my kids are taken care of easily. Yeah. Um, so now I, all these things are coming up in me. So that's, I tell all of my friends that, you know, you don't need to work like 40 hours in office and then 40 hours at home. Save those 40 hours at home and do something else in that time. Definitely. Be more productive. I think it gives that flexibility, right? Because you don't have uh, to do like some of the chores that you don't have to. I mean, because there is some help and that provides more flexibility with the time and uh, frees up a lot of time completely. Um, okay. Anything on the um, on the kids' adjustment, right? I think in the kids' schooling. So how did you go about selecting the school for your elder one, especially, like, you know, who uh, has been in eighth grade right now, like uh, someone who did their schooling in uh, India, I mean, like in UK, most of the time in the private school, like curriculum selection, school selection, any insights or anything that you can share on that? So that was, uh, <clears throat> so on the schooling side, because my son, he used to go to Seven Oak School uh, in Kent. And that's one of the most prestigious school here. So we had the kind of a different type of a challenge because we have to find a school which is equally good in yeah. India. It was, it was not that easy. Uh, so... In terms of curriculum, that was not that difficult because it's GCSC here and it's IGCSC in the international, so which is very similar. So in terms of curriculum, it's pretty much the same. Yeah. Uh, the school selection was important because I I didn't want that, you know, I take them over there and then they start feeling like, you know, we're not getting the same level of education or same level of facilities and all that. So for that, I I kind of uh, I selected one of the prestigious uh, 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 international schools in Bangalore, um, so that they don't feel the kind of a much difference. So initially, both of my sons they were not they were quite you know you know the, the, they were like ganging up ganging up together saying that you know dad is kind of making all this kind of a nonsense plan is. <laughs> This idea of, you know, exposure to India and all that stuff is non-scrap and all that. So they kind of, you know, they, they were ganging up on that part. Yeah. And and they were kind of, you know, reminding me in the first week again and again, dad, you kind of, you know, they are quite open about it. They just talk to me like a friend yeah. and they just try to pull my legs as well. You know, dad come up with these kind of all these kind of bullshit ideas of, you know, exposure and this, that and all. We had such a good life over there and now he's... but. After a week, I can tell you, they, they, they kept complaining for first week. But within a month's time, and I, I saw that transition and I loved it. That's This is how it happened. So recently, there was a Ganesh Chaturthi and all that. Yeah. So everybody in the uh, in our community started, you know, celebrating it. They all went out. Some kids started playing, you know, football, some other games. Every day they go out and play. Somebody comes to their house, some of his friends, and they take him, take take them out to play something or the other. Both of them, they're always busy playing, you know, whenever yeah. they get home, after doing their homework and all that, whenever they have time. 
and i love that part because i would like them to play exactly like this yes which never used to happen here so now they are liking it they are loving it so much however because now because since they tried to accuse me earlier <laughs> now you know you know now they can't really accept it easily but now they are really happy so uh, i have also sent our dogs over there recently that was another difficult thing and very expensive process but now they have their dog and now they have uh, they have made around 10 15 friends in the community yeah. in the, within the span of few weeks or months and now they have no time and when i talk to them and are you lagging there yeah it's good it's very good but i would like them to acknowledge and say dad we are sorry you were right <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah cool um so i think let's touch about this um you know especially on the sports right you know you were younger one who seems like you know uh, very good at tennis and you are providing all you know the opportunities for him to be excelling on that so how is the environment here in india in terms of the facilities in terms of the program you know somebody who is more into that uh, sports side uh, how are the opportunities here i mean you know you wanted to juggle you know because your elder son is at a threshold where you have to make a decision but at the end, on the other end younger one is like you know booming or you know getting blossomed in this uh, sports uh just curious because you know it's not the same as like you have in western world in some of these opportunities so just uh, anything that you can shed some light like how are the coaches how are the coaches opportunities and all that stuff okay so uh in terms of tennis very specifically because that's a very niche subject uh i can talk about that so we did a reiki in april may as i told you before we moved in july so so we went to bangalore because we chose bangalore first of all for the weather reason because for tennis you need a you need a decent weather you cannot go to uh, uh, a place where you cannot play so more or less you can play throughout the year that's the yeah. kind of a, that's why we had to choose uh, bangalore um, that's one second one was to we checked a lot of tennis academies around bangalore is your rohan bopanna tennis academy then there is a soul sports and then there is a, a, a padukone and dravid uh, excellent sports excellent center and all that there are many few others this is a mahesh bhupati one so so we chose one academy so when we when you saw a lot of academies um then when we chose this academy this particular academy which is called soul sports which is a which is in sarjapur um i i saw the the way the kids were playing they have 10 um clay court no oh, yeah tennis at clay court and then i was kind of a uh, i just went to see i wasn't kind of a it's not there's no big names backing uh, in, in that academy like mahesh bhupadi or rohan bopanna or sania mirza type right so it was a i somebody recommended me and i went there and what i saw was that there were many children those who were like maybe 13 14 or 15 years old as well their their main objective of career is to become tennis player yeah and they were and they don't they do home schooling okay and they were playing so good okay. they impressed me because i've because i watch my son playing yes. tennis in the uk all the time yeah, yeah. when i saw that it basically definitely uh, you know impressed me a lot then i realized okay this is as good as uh, you know what i see in the uk okay but in fact i found one thing better over there two things better one is i mean two three things better which i feel number one they have all the clay courts that would be the problem so that helps you know it doesn't give you a lot of what you call uh, uh, you know uh, it keeps your knees protected you know in that sense okay okay that's one number two uh they have a program program in the sense that three hours they're going to play in the evening and in the morning for one hour so which is like four hours and generally if you are pursuing you know professional type tennis then you have to play kind of a four hours but here my son was able to do just two hours or one hours a day kind of because of the travel and then the waiting and they here the facilities are great yeah but the problem is that when in winters you need indoor courts outdoor yes. courts don't work 
yeah. then suddenly there's a lot of pressure in the you know for the indoor courts booking yes. you don't get the booking for multiple hours yeah right you have to every time you have to kind of make your son play you have to book the coach you have to book the court which is yeah. a lot of you know here it's a program you send them you send your children and then he will play for three hours in the evening and one hour in the morning. I don't have to book the court. Yeah. I don't have to kind of, you know, uh, think about the weather. Or... Yeah. So all these things are helping us a lot. You don't have to just, you have now enrolled him into a process. That's, that's kind of a, so one more thing which happened was that, um, for the tennis, in fact, I, I want to kind of, you know, talk about it because in May, we made him go to Soul Sports yeah. where he was playing tennis. So he he went there for, for a week or so. Mm -hmm. And then he came to UK mm -hmm. and he was representing the county here, the Kent. Yeah. And the Kent County guys, they were not sure that, you know, this guy has gone to India for 20 days and now he's coming yeah. for a very important tournament. Should he be part of the squad or not? But they, his performance was good that they had to take him. They took him and all that. But when he played here, and he was the he was the, uh, the the I would say the man of the entire tournament. Wow. Uh, he was able to pull his entire team out of the danger, and uh, the Kent County won the uh, you know the championship, etc. And that was to everybody's surprise, to my surprise as well. What I realize is that he developed the stamina because Indian weather provides a bit of more. You know, you yeah. develop in stamina because you play under a bit of the weather is not like you know ten or twelve. Yes, indeed. It's like or around. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's why they warm us. So, I mean, that was good. And I realized I saw the coaching standards. That was good as well. Okay. And for for nine years, eight years, that's enough to my mind. For till 13, 14. If somebody, you know, if he goes further, that we have to see in the future. Yes. Then we have to arrange a different type of coaching. For now, it is great. So, yeah. Sounds like I think there are a lot of uh, positives that you see, uh, you know, for someone who is in a tennis, trying to get into more on a professional side in terms of facilities, in terms of the, uh, you know, the coaches, the programs, the weather and all that stuff. So, I think, you know, that's uh, uh, the takeaway. Uh, I, I, I mean, because this is my very, what you call... Um, favorite subject so you know <laughs> like sports and these all these activities so my elder son he was missing out on all these activities because we were focusing on only on one son you know going to so he was not able to he wants to do let's say swimming or something else yeah now we enrolled him into badminton he plays uh, uh, nearby academies which are like quite a few good badminton academies so now he plays two hours of badminton yeah. almost every other day now they have they have been enrolled to chess club. They love chess as well. Not every day, but occasionally. So now they are filled. Their life is filled with the activities. Yes. Playing with the other kids, the chess, the badminton, the swimming, and everything. And that was lacking here. Yeah. It was you. If you want to fill it, you have to give your time. That was yes, the definitely. main difference. Yeah. yeah. That's great. So. I think I just wanted to maybe understand a little bit on the logistics side, on the physical move, right? You know, you know, someone from UK, because I have some understanding from the US side. So for you living there for a long time, when you're moving uh, to India, is there anything that you can share from a physical move itself? Like, you know, shipping the contents in a container, like, you know, what are the options there? And, uh, you know, just a typical numbers in terms of how it would work. Any, any, anything that you can share? Yeah. I don't know how many... People are interested in pet and all that. So pet is another kind of uh, thing which is which is very, I would say, painful <laughs> to move. But the other is, of course, your household goods, etc. Now, uh, yes, there are kind of a lot of, uh, you know, we took a lot of quotes uh, from a lot of companies. And uh, they. it's a very simple process, what I realize, in fact. It's a process is very simple. Whatever you want to take, you just decide. Also, check the value of your goods, in fact, before basically you just don't want to carry everything. Um, so you take the course, you can get, you know, half a container generally, which is enough to carry a lot of things. Furniture, I realize we don't need to carry. Um, if you have a house which you can, you know, give on rent here, so you can leave the furniture here for your tenants, whatever, because you can get the better furniture, uh, 
in a less than the price i mean far less than lesser than here so it's uh, so i would say so moving furniture is not a great idea unless you have a very expensive furniture something you know that's mm -hmm. one thing second is uh, uh, generally it is not, it is not that expensive yes of course you know you are moving country so you have to shell out about 4 5 thousand pounds which is 4 5 lakhs around in yeah. indian rupees uh, but i think we have spent only like 1 and a half lakhs rupees so far because no. we have just put like a lot of stuff in the boxes in the first phase in the second phase we are sending you know more boxes like that so okay. i think it will be it will come out to be about 4000 pounds or 4 lakhs around kind of uh, uh, expenses it's a yeah. very simple they will come and pack your stuff you tell them what to pack uh, don't stress too much about it it is not that difficult i realize uh, okay. but before before uh, uh, we started the process we felt like it's too difficult and this that but there are a lot of companies out there in india those who help you out so, so yeah there like a couple or two or three uh, companies uh, that you can uh, name so just i think you know we don't see like a lot of people from uk they're just curious so at least we can have those options so people can reach out to them what is this what is mr yeah one is mr move they're quite economical that's my point i mean so i think i took uh, the quotes from multiple companies um, their quotes were ranging a lot but this was the one which i felt to be very reasonable so i went with them got it I know you talked about pet a little bit, uh, you know, a few times. So sounds like I think it's a big process yes. at least to, uh, you know, relocate big, them yeah. from the UK. Um, maybe you can give like a high level view, like, you know, somebody if has anything, I think we can connect on it just to be mindful of the time, like uh, at least like, you know, the process of yes. relocating the pets uh, from UK to India. So I think this process is pretty much uh, from everywhere. It's similar to my mind. So uh, you need to basically, uh, uh, there's a lot of certifications, a lot of uh, what you call documentations. Their process is very different. So what we have done is basically we hired an agent again. So Mr. Moves, Mr. Move helped in that as well. Yeah. So they also, um, you know, any other, you know, whoever is moving your luggages to India, they, they, I mean, they can also help you with the pets because they know there is a process. So the process basically requires all the vaccinations, some certificate, if the check needs to happen two weeks before, one week before, and on the day, something like that. So for a pet, this is to make sure he doesn't, he doesn't have any infection or anything. A flight ticket needs to be booked. A cage, uh, sorry, not cage, what do you call it? A crate needs to yeah. be arranged, which which the agent agent will arrange for you. Okay. Uh, so all of, and then there has to be agent in India who's going to receive him yeah. from the, uh, so you have to hire the two agents. One is here and there, but one agency will help you. Yeah. So, so that's why, because there is an agency in India, there's agency here uh, and a lot of checks. Got it. Both the places. Sounds like a lot of certifications, a lot of process, paperwork that's involved on both. Yeah, yeah, checks, you know, yeah, checks, yeah. you know, because if, when we travel, there's no check. Nobody checks whether you are having yeah. you know, anything. But th for them, they have to they need to get the checks done. Their all the vaccination records need to be yeah. brought in. Uh, the uh, so that's why. Got it. Um. Yeah. So one last thing from a planning perspective, uh, I think on a financial perspective, right? I know like you know someone who lived in UK for so long. Uh, I don't know like how the pension systems work or like you know some of the other programs. Anything that you can shed some light or insights, at least from your perspective, on how to handle if someone is moving back to India, you know, for good. So regarding pensions, you know, to be fair, that's the area which uh, I, I haven't done too much digging into it, which I will do with, with time. But as far as I understand, uh, you know, the, the information I have is that if I want, I can transfer all my pension from UK to India if I want. That is, all your accumulated pension can be moved to some India fund or somewhere. That's a possibility. But that you need, or you can keep it here. It doesn't really matter to my mind. So, I mean, so one more thing which I'm trying to do is that I'm not trying to just, you know, um, I'm trying to slowly move to India yeah. rather than, you know, yeah, of course, some of these things, you know, the pension, the uh, few other kind of, let's say I have some property, I'm just keeping it here, keeping them here, not selling them. Yeah. 
is keeping them for rent. Uh, that will kind of help us to, you know, sometimes travel and check once in a year kind of stuff. So, so we just trying to keep these connections on. Yeah. Um, and I like to continuously see the decision which I have made is how appropriate it is. You know, you just feel like sometimes. Yes, yes. So yep. with UK, it's not very far from, I mean, it's far, but you know, eight, nine, 10 hours of flight, but it's not like US where 17, 18 hours. So to my mind, it is slightly easier. Yeah. And, uh, but I can tell you one thing, even when I, when we have moved to India, um, I mean, it, it might sound like, you know, I'm just trying to, uh, uh, you know, uh, pushing what I have done. I think to my mind, it's, uh, to me, it that the life in the in the Europe or in the Western world looks like a waste unless and until it is not economically compensated, you know, yeah. to a good level. So it has to economically substantially compensate it in order for you to live over there. Otherwise, this life is, to my mind, is not worth kind of a living. Or if you can move your job to India, there's nothing like it. And I can tell you one secret here. When I decided to move to India, my two neighbors, they have also decided to move to India. They are also Indian by chance. Yeah. So now they are also moving to India. So yeah. that is uh, <laughs> another thing which is happening. Because people are feeling like, you know, they are wasting their time. I can tell you this thing. But they are not able to find a way to go back. Yeah. If you are in a job, your job has to be moved somehow. If you don't have a... If your company is only UK based or US based and they don't they don't have any presence and they can't send you there, it's hard. Yeah. I mean, that's true. I mean, sometimes we're just so busy with our day-to-day -day work, right? I mean, even these thoughts might be occurring, you just get busy with the day-to-day -day stuff. And you know, sometimes yes. it just takes a time to make even a decision, right? I think you know, just taking yeah. a step back. And looking overall, like, you know, what's happening in the life and what's important, which makes sense, whatever it could be, right? I think uh, uh, I, I think that's my main thing is, you know, decide which our place is better, you know, whether uh, living abroad or living in India is completely fine. But making a decision which a conscious decision is more important than let the life go by before you realize you might not even have the opportunity to make the decision. Yeah, just because. Because you, you need to meet those people as well. I would say, so I consciously went and I met those people, those who have, their kids are grown up. They are much older than me, maybe yeah. 10, 15 years older than me. I want to see from their eyes whether, you know, they've gone with a wind kind of, you know, continued with their life. Was that better decision or, or better kind of approach? Or, And I think they all agreed that they made a mistake by not going on time. Yeah. I mean, it's not one, it's almost all of all of them, uh, except the generation which came here in 1970s or 80s or something like that. That generation is different because that generation still thinks that India is yeah, in yeah. the same place where it was at that time. Yeah. When I meet them, they still feel the same. I met some of the people, those who have never gone back to India in the last 20 years, and they're just looking at whatever they see here and there on BBC, whatever. Yeah. They have completely a wrong notion about India. Yeah. So uh, they, they will not know. But the people, those who have been constantly going, they realize, they have started realizing now that, uh, that you know, you are missing out. You are missing out on the, on a ship which is which is going in a completely in a different trajectory altogether. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, no, that's yeah. great. Uh, thanks a lot for all this information. So, is there anything that we haven't covered that you would like to bring up, or any advice that you want to give to the future aspirants? Uh, you know, who are thinking about moving back to India? Yeah, very quick. I I want to give number one, which are important. I realize that generally your your wife may not agree to go back to India. Uh, make sure that you convince her by moving her to a different city. That's one, right? Second, uh, if your kids are not completely active in the Western world, fully active in the men's, in the sense, like, you know, when they come back from the schools, if they are not playing, if you have multiple kids, like all of them are not playing every day, 
to my mind you are not doing justice for them because soon they will grow up they are like a plant you need them to be able to interact with a lot of other children in terms of play and different games and all that they should be doing all these activities after school yeah. and uh, third think about your parents and at this stage in life the older generation is dropping off think about it right so should be able to should be you should be part of that that's very important third be more productive you can do a lot you can get a lot more from your life by having some help available and uh, you can be you can just multiply yourself by two by moving to india like yourself you are doing business podcast and few other things i cannot do podcast if if i decide if i continue to live in the uk because it's it's hard if you have kids if you have family if you have a job you can't do you can't take another activity on board i mean that's impossible so yeah be more productive if you have energy you know few decades left of productive energy use it that's my advice no oh, yeah very 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 uh, you know uh, important like you know very uh, very very wise advice yeah so so Praveen, thanks a lot for uh, you know very wonderful uh, you know insights, information that you have shared. A lot of valuable uh, knowledge uh, in terms of the sports facilities, in terms of the kids, like how you approach, like how the things are piling up, and even the tidbit of how to convince your wife. Right, I think uh, the secret there. So thanks a lot for your time, and really appreciate you sharing your journey with us and a uh, lot of insights there. Thank, Thank you. you very much, Avinash. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm.